Welcome to Collector Guys. Here we are at the Palmer Event Center in Austin, Texas, and we're at the Oddities and Curiosity Expo. And I'm curious to see what's actually at this expo because I've never been before. So let's go check it out. What did we find inside? A stage featuring sideshow acts, like this guy juggling muskrat traps. A museum of oddities that I was too cheap to buy a ticket for. From the posters I saw in their gift shop, looks like there was maybe a six foot man-eating chicken inside. Cool. You could even sign up and take a taxidermy class. There were fortune tellers, though they called them something else, maybe for legal reasons. But the real fun was with the vendors. And to learn more about the show, we started by talking to Caitlin at Showtime Taxidermy. One of the busiest vendors there was some of the more creative inventory. This is my business, Showtime Taxidermy, and I make fabulous little taxidermy pieces in the show Girl Burlesque. We started doing this just as a fun craft night. Honestly, we wanted to learn how to do taxidermy, and then the natural next step was let's put them in sexy costumes. Do you travel with this show generally? I do. I do. Okay. I tend to travel with all the shows that are within a day drive, so in the south central uh, United States. Nice. And there's a really good turnout this show today. It's a great show. Is this like this everywhere? Yes. And really? This is actually on the small side. Wow. Uh, yeah. We were sold out by about lunchtime in Dallas. They they swarmed. Wow. So, um, we're doing more two day shows next year to accommodate all the crowds. What do you attribute the popularity of this show to? Oh my gosh. The show. Uh, the people who run this show are the absolute most incredible professionals. They do such a good job of taking care of their customers, their vendors, everything is seamless. They are so professional and I don't vent with anybody else because they are so good at what they do. The expo was full of young, hip people. Lots of black clothes and tattoos. The kind of good folks who might want to have a stuffed rat in a martini glass on the end table. Wear a necklace made of snake bones or put a stuffed raccoon wherever you would put a stuffed raccoon. I have an oddity shop back in McAllen, Texas. And why, why do you like this piece so much? Um, honestly, I think she's really pretty. Um, it's my first full body mount, so it's pretty exciting for me. So yeah. There was a lot of really nice artwork, paintings, prints, and sculptures. Some of the things they did with insects were absolutely gorgeous. Who knew you could take such dark subject matter and make it so beautiful? Um, I travel the country with the expo. Okay. Um, I do at least half the cities a year at this point. I like mixing dark with light. So bright colors, um, dark subject matter, um, because I think nothing in the universe exists on its own, you kind of have to have a balance of the two. Also saw plenty of pieces of art made from organic material, like this creature here. So this is all organic material for this part? Or? Predominantly, if I use anything non-organic, there's usually always a reason, but every once in a while, I'll use a, an old dead watch or like a coin from a sunken Roman ship or something. I moved down to Corpus Christi about two years ago, so the coastal influence is definitely creeping in. I'm using a lot more shells, fish bones, things that wash up on the beach. Um, and then all kinds of animal bones, deer, hog, uh, some coyote. And really, the trick to it is just gathering as many materials as I can. So if you come into the studio, it's just rows and columns of bins of bones and shells and stones and seeds, seed pods, just anything I can gather up. And then building the sculptures from there, they all end up sort of being a hodgepodge of just everything that's available to me. There was also jewelry, lots and lots of amazing jewelry, like these pendants made of preserved spider webs. There are also a wide variety of accessories. For instance, these, which were functional with a tip of the hat to spiritualism. I'm Melody of Fog Bear. I'm the leather worker. Tell me a little bit about what you got going on here. What are you making here? So I make hair accessories and other wearables, like my wings here. They go on boots and corsets and skates. And you have planchette hair slides. Mm -hmm. what, is, what, is, what, are, what is a planchette hair slide? A planchette hair slide is just a hair accessory that goes generally like above a hair tie. 
and they're just designed for the people that are really into the, some of the darker spooky stuff like, like you know Ouija boards and whatnot so there's a lot of different options there for uh, how obvious you want to be sometimes people aren't really familiar with it so you can have a, a little secret there to show your interest but other people just aren't as aware of what's going on they're all leather they're like the same thickness as saddle grade leather and everything's hand tooled I don't use any stamps you could pick up supplies for your next occult activity or learn how to make contact with your dead relatives. We uh, have our seance facilitators. We've been conducting seances and occult workshops uh, throughout the state uh, for the last uh, seven or eight years. Um, and so uh, that's something that uh, you guys can, can look us up. We have all sorts of interesting objects here. We have here a spirit cabinet. This is a uh, accoutrement of the seances uh, from the late 1900s and early 20th century. Uh, they were popularized by a woman named uh, Marjorie Pandon, who was a very famous spiritualist. Uh, also by uh, someone called the Davenport Brothers, who started using the first uh, spirit cabinets. This is a cabinet that we often use uh, during our own sessions. We have, believe it or not, we have three cabinets in our possession. This is just one of them. This is actually one of the smaller cabinets that we have. Uh, we have all sorts of other accoutrements. We have uh, the famous Ouija board. If you have the original Ouija board, it will have William Fold. This is a varnisher from the Canard Novelty Company, from, again from the late 19th century, and he had the, one of the original patents to the original Ouija, uh, Ouija board. Um, we also have a different sort of talking board over there. This is called a uh, this is called a Wilbur board. It's a similar sort of device. It's a, also used. Uh, in the seance room, and this is something that we sometimes deploy as well. Um, seances and spiritualism have been long tradition, last uh, over 100 years, 120 years. Uh, the first seance was conducted in 1848 on March 31st in Hydesdale, New York by the Fox Sisters. Death is an underlying theme with a lot of the items sold here. Whether it was insects, serial killers, or pictures of actual dead people. Not to mention animals, all sorts of dead animals. Pigs, fish, completely stuffed critters. Where do all these come from? According to their website, quote, all items you see at our shows are legal to own and sustainably sourced. And we have saved the very best for last. Over on the side at this little table, was one of the most fascinating things I saw at the entire show. Explain what you have going here, this interesting art you have. They're diaphanized wet specimens, which are wet specimens that have been cleared and stained, so the soft tissue is made transparent, and the bones and cartilage are dyed, so you can visualize their anatomy and their skeleton. Has this been around for a long time? Oh yeah. Um, it was a technique that was developed before we had like MRIs, x-rays, things like that, so that you could visualize a whole body together without like taking it apart. Um, it was developed mostly in the 70s, but there is like paperwork that goes back to like the 1920s about it. How long does it take to do, uh, I know there's different sizes mm -hmm. here, but is it a long process? It is. Um, it's like minimum a month for like the smallest, uh, the smallest guys take about a month. But the larger specimens, like the goat here, can take like six months, and I've had some take a year to finish. Wow, so is this right here, this, this goat, is this yeah. the biggest thing you've done? I've done bigger. Um, I've done, I do pet commissions, so I've done like uh, rabbits and, and dogs that are a bit bigger, and those take more like a year to do. Here's the question, could you do a human being? You could. Um, theoretically, if you had enough money and space to do it, um, there have been human fetuses that do it. If you look at like the, the bodies exhibit, I know that travels around the country, they have some diaphanized fetuses that they use. Um, you could do an adult human. It would take a really, really long time though and cost a whole bunch of money. <laughs> we wrapped up the show by checking out some of the really off-the-wall merchandise, like this Hawaiian shirt featuring infamous mug shots, a John Wayne Gacy rug, and my absolute favorite thing I saw, check this out, expired action figures. And I really mean expired. Nothing left but bones, shells, and weapons. Complete with a quote from Mom. You didn't play with them, and now they are dead. The Oddities and Curiosities Expo was a lot of fun. Check one out if you can. These are all over the country. 
To find the one closest to you, go to odditiesandcuriositiesexpo.com. Thanks for watching Collector Guys. Hit that subscribe button and check out all of our great videos. And always remember, surround yourself with what you love.